Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Road to Emmaus podcast. So today, new news out of London. <laughs> this is brand new that you are not allowed to sing worship songs anymore. Not outside of church, anyway. At least that's what a volunteer police officer had to say in this new video that just came out. A police officer coming up to a woman that is worshiping, and she says, you can't do that, not outside of church. Take a look at this video. Um, Listen, Anne, let's uh, talk about this uh, shocking story that has just emerged online. It's uh, massive, uh, in my opinion. It's a volunteer police officer in London telling a Christian woman that she couldn't sing church songs outside of a church setting. Take a listen, you'll be shocked. A religion you're allowed to do anywhere. No, miss, you're not allowed to sing uh, church songs outside of church grounds, by the way. You're not allowed to sing church songs outside Outside of church uh, church, uh, songs or uh, church grounds. That's fine, that's fine. You're not allowed, she just said you're not allowed to sing church songs outside of church. Outside of of church grounds, unless you have... Unless That's you've a load been of authorized no, no. by the church to do this kind of song. Yeah, he's not saying anything anymore, thank you. Are you saying that you don't care about the Human Rights Act? You're lost? Hmm. And this is a volunteer police officer telling a member of the British public they cannot sing Christian songs outside of a church setting. Uh, Deeply disturbing. Does this raise questions about the culture and ideology of modern British policing? Well, it certainly will if she is not struck off uh, from the voluntary force tomorrow morning. So that's what's going on out there. So this person claims that no longer are you allowed. Meanwhile, they can chant mosque, you know, uh, prayers like Muslim prayers for everyone to hear in British and in, in Britain. But now this Christian nation, this once Christian nation, can no longer sing worship songs out in public. What do you think of that? Yeah, that's sad. That's sad. But, you know, we've all seen this coming. Uh, we've yeah. seen more and more persecution uh, of the Christian church. Um, and we're not even talking about nations that are that actually do not allow it. Like, for example, in places like Iran, Iraq, uh, Pakistan, and other places. But we're talking about uh, the Western um, modern nations, uh, U.S., now Britain. And that's actually going to be like the state of affairs moving forward. Uh, we've seen it. It's happening. And the Bible, you know, very specifically talks about it. Uh, this has been prophesied. If you've been reading your Bible, <laughs> and <laughs> if you have not been reading your Bible, I mean, surprise, it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And this is, again, a Christian nation that is silencing Christians because it's not politically correct. It should offend somebody, right? You can offend the gay community. You can offend Muslims. You, can per- you don't know what other people's faith are. You know, I w- in my travels, you know, when we were doing missionary work, you know, I went to, um, I went to Malaysia. I went to Vietnam. I went to Kazakhstan. And these are not Christian nations, Right. And every Christian, I mean, Malaysia is a Muslim nation, a very big Muslim nation. And it's interesting. Every time I go to these, you know, like a communist nation like um, like Vietnam or a communist nation. Well, it's somewhat communist. uh, um, It it has communist remnants uh, from the old Russia era. And -hmm. that is Kazakhstan, which they're kind of just kind of to toss up a little bit. But then you got a Malaysian country, which is all Muslim. All these places, they have churches. They, they don't mind. You can be a church as long as you don't preach the gospel, as long as you don't minister to people, as long as you don't show people that you are a Christian. You can go into the four walls because that's exactly where the enemy wants you. Stay in your church, stay in your pews, keep quiet about your faith, and don't talk to anybody. You know, that's where the enemy wants you. And that's what we're seeing in Christian nations such as america such as um the uh, uh, such as britain and soon to come to the philippines because that's a christian nation too mm-hmm. how long until scre- street preaching is no longer allowed yeah and speaking of uh, street preaching they're going to be the very first that's going to really feel uh this persecution that's coming um because if what we've seen in the video is going to be the state of affairs for 
everyone in the world, then you will be locked in into your church, inside your church building. You can yeah. no longer uh, uh, preach out in the streets. You cannot share your your faith with others, for example, on campus. So how about the campus ministers? So that's going mm-hmm. to be that's going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it already started happening in like places like Canada um, and Australia. You know, these places. You you know, it's like if you if you preach the wrong thing, you know, sure they'll allow you to speak and you have the ability to go out there and let your voice be heard. But if you say the wrong thing, if people are too offended, then you are arrested for disturbing the peace. I love what um, Jehu said in the Bible. You know, it's like people came to him. It's like, Jehu, is it peace that you are coming? And mm-hmm. he's like, what do you know of peace? Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's what I feel like it kind of is. What do you know of peace? And that's why you shouldn't be peacekeepers. You should be peacemakers. And peacemakers need to bring offense, just like Jesus. He was a peacemaker, and he did not come to bring peace but a sword that's what jesus said that divides the the righteous from the unrighteous the ones that are in love with god and the ones that aren't you know to put a sword to put division in there to divide the sheep from the goats absolutely and that is not going to be a peaceful um, path to take but you know how we always say jules on the show we say let me encourage you it's going to get worse yeah yeah definitely yeah. it's going to get worse i mean yeah you- yeah, if you're reading your Bible again, you would know that there is a coming tribulation that's going to come upon the earth. There's going to be a tribulation that has not been seen since mm-hmm. the beginning of time, since the crea- the world was created. So what that means is everything is going to be much worse. Evil people will do even more <laughs> evil pe- uh, things. So... Uh, like you said, you know, things are going to get, uh, become much worse. Yeah. And, you know, that comes from Matthew 24. And Matthew 24, people, you know, a lot of people say that, okay, we don't, we're not going to have to worry about this, this great tribulation, this tribulation times that are going to come upon the world because we're going to be raptured out of here. Um, well, it's hard to tell that to like, you know, people that are being killed and left for dead in Pakistan and, and other parts of the country, but um, just for their faith. But also, it says in Matthew 24, it says that there shall be a great tribulation, such has never been or ever will be. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus himself says after that, after the tribulation, that tribulation in those days, Mm -hmm. then I will gather my elect from all the four corners of the Mm -hmm. world, and then you'll be forever. Yeah, so that's, that's what Jesus said. So you have to take that understanding and know that we are gonna face hard times we're gonna face persecution but that what we always say let me encourage you it's gonna get worse all right that's actually more biblical than i really thought it was i knew it was biblical but i uh, i saw this in the book of acts let me let me show you yeah so this is in acts 14 verse 21 and it says and when they and when they had preached all right, this is Paul and them. All right, so when Paul was out there and he was preaching, he says, and when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, saying, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. I, I like how it says that. It says, exhorting them. To continue in the faith by saying this, you will face a lot of trials to enter the kingdom of God. You must face a lot of tribulations to enter the kingdom of God. Here, let me encourage you. Let me lift you up. Let me exhort you. You must go through a lot to get there, right? You're going to go a lot a lot of tribulations in, the, in this world while you're on the path of entering the kingdom of God, All right? So it, just to sum it up, let me encourage you. It's going to get a lot worse. This is coming straight from Paul. Yes, we as Christians that truly believe in letting our faith be heard, preaching the gospel, spreading the good news so all can hear. Yes, we are going to be persecuted against. Meanwhile, the people that lock themselves in the church only come on Sundays, do a little bit of worship, you know, and just keep their their faith to themselves. These people will more than likely just be just fine because you can't you can't discern them from everybody else 
mm-hmm. and the enemy is not worried about those people. It's just yeah. like when Jesus went into the synagogue, and in in the synagogue was um was the uh, uh, the demon. The demon stood up. What is a demon doing there? And you know, it's like inside the four walls where you're just listening to the word and going through the motions. The religious, the enemy has no problem going in there and just being right at home. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So with everything going wrong, going to be much worse, um, it really flies in the face of uh, what most people think that when you become uh, a born-again Christian, that when you put your hope, your faith, your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, that everything is going to be just perfect here in this world. That mm-hmm. you can live your best life now. <laughs> just and, manifest it. But little do they know, I just learned about manifestation. Now I'm going to get so much money. I don't need a job. Why? Because I can manifest. I don't need the old gods anymore. I answer to no one. I mean, you just manifest, you know, what you want to have. And then you get it. You're, it's, it's going to be perfect. Yeah, we just ministered to that young man um, uh, last Sunday, just mm-hmm. ministered to a young man, and he was deceived by a lot of preachers that said that if he just comes to Christ, oh, everything's going to be so good. But then <laughs> as soon as he faced trials because of his faith, he immediately said, this is not what I signed up for. I didn't yeah. know that it was going to be bad. And he was wondering, why is that? And that mm-hmm. caused him to stumble. We need to be honest. And just like Paul was honest, let me encourage you. It's going to get worse. But remember, it's going to get worse because you're on the way to the kingdom. Right? You're going to get worse because you're on the way to somewhere good. And the enemy's not going to like that. Right? And if you really start to serve, it's kind of like, uh, what was that movie? Inception. Yeah. Right? When you were part of the system, when you were part of the mind, uh, the thought process, you just fit right in. Nobody bothered you. But mm-hmm. as soon as you start doing things different, as soon as you start, all the like the all the the uh, the, the people in the uh, in the inception, whatever it was, started to come against you to try to kill you, right? The same thing is like if you break this reality and the knowledge and wisdom of Christ and understanding that we are not of this world, but we are of Christ. All of a sudden, the people that are of this world are just gonna hate it. It's just gonna rub them the wrong way. And you're going to get people that will go away from you, people that will talk bad about you. If it happened to Christ, it shall happen to you. This is not me talking. This is just the words of God. So let me encourage you. It's going to get worse. (laughs) And congratulations, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Britain, because now it's happening to you. But you know what? Uh, I love what uh, Peter, was it Peter and Silas, right? They were persecuted and then after they were let go, mm. they celebrated that they were blessed with the fact that they were being persecuted for their faith. Yeah. You know, P- Peter celebrating with Silas. Yeah. Wasn't that great? You know, and that's the way we have to look at it, is that blessed are those who persecute, or blessed are those, um, blessed are you when they persecute you for righteousness sake. Yeah. When you remember that, because yeah. it's definitely going to happen. All right. So what do you guys think about this? Have you seen something like this in your neighborhood? Is this coming to a town near you? How long do you think it happened until it happens like maybe even our churches where they, you know, again, just lock us in and they don't allow us to ring church bells anymore and they don't allow us to have open worship? How long until that happens in America or the Philippines if it's already happening in Britain and Canada and also Australia and other places around the world that aren't even Muslim nations? How long do we have to go out there and preach the gospel? Let us know in the comments below what you think about this whole subject. And as always, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to these videos. They really do help us out. Get the word out there and talk about current events and also biblical teachings such as this. That's it for today, guys. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you on the next one.